Hey there guys, we're taking a look at Dota 2 running on the AMD Ryzen 5 5500U. Now the game is currently running at 1080p with the lowest in-game graphics settings except for the textures and models being set to the highest quality. The render resolution is also kept at 100% and this is realistically how I feel like most people would play the game at. Or at least that's how I personally played it. I really don't like having all the extra visual effects in a game like this. I feel like Dota, if anything, is already kind of distracting with the amount of effects that it has so having any of the other graphic settings on i think makes the whole experience of playing it more difficult but here you are looking at a replay of an og game versus gg and the reason i'm showing you a replay is because replays are essentially the most demanding thing you can do in dota because normally while playing dota you're only going to be getting the perspective of one team at most here you pretty much get the entirety of the map and it really is essentially the most stressful situation so if you can do good here you are going to be doing great throughout the entirety of playing the game. And here you could see that at the stock TDP, we're getting some pretty decent performance here. The 1% lows are only slightly under 60, and it's more than reasonable for the game experience here. And the averages that we're getting are very, very solid. You're gonna be able to comfortably do some high refresh rate gaming here. What that essentially means is that if you have this system hooked up to a monitor, you're gonna be able to have a really, really smooth experience while playing here. And you can see that we are using almost eight gigabytes of RAM, which means back when we tested with just eight gigabytes of ram we were pretty limited here and really you'll notice that the biggest uplift that we have is just in those one percent lows specifically because of the ram really what we're actually running into in a lot of situations is actually a limitation from the cpu if you look at the gpu it's actually not even fully utilized and it's not even running at the maximum clock speed we're kind of just limited by the speed of the cpu at this point especially with all of the graphics settings set to their lowest we actually actually pretty much end up in a situation where the CPU is doing a lot of the work here. So by raising the TDP, we can actually boost the clock speeds a bit and actually net us a nice performance increase. And you can see here that pretty much what ends up happening with the 25 watt TDP is that we essentially don't actually see too much of an uplift here, but we do now have 1% lows that are at 60 FPS and averages that are above 100. So overall, the experience is just smoother, but it isn't going to be anything groundbreaking because you'll see again this cpu is at this point just limited to a 4 gigahertz clock speed and again the gpu is not being fully utilized here so really the only way to net any more performance would be to somehow increase the cpu clocks but unfortunately this cpu is locked like that so you can't really raise it past its 4 gigahertz max clock speed and that at this point is what's holding us back though holding us back is relative here because we are essentially running at a 60 hertz refresh rate on the display here anyway which means we we are just never going to fall below that so it is the most ideal situation here and again if we use an external monitor we are going to be able to do some high refresh rate gaming and that is also pretty great and you'll see that going with the 30 watt TDP at this point is really just scraping the bottom of the barrel in terms of performance gains here. We are seeing an uplift in the 1% lows that it's almost at a 70 FPS range and our averages are now comfortably in the 110 range, but it is nothing remarkable. And again, the CPU at this point is what's holding us back. The gains that we're getting here are pretty much just in the CPU being able to stay consistently at four gigahertz now. And that really is what is the biggest net gain here. And that's why we're getting the most consistent possible 1% lows here. The temperature gain that we're seeing isn't substantial, but I don't know if I would play the game prolongedly like this, but realistically, I haven't really been playing Dota much at all recently. So I don't know if I would actually realistically play like this or not. But really the level of performance that we're getting here is just very, very nice to see in a game like this. And I think most people are going to be very satisfied with this. It certainly does not run as well as League of Legends does, but League of Legends was pretty much just designed to actually just run on toasters. In fact, I'm pretty sure if you have one of those Samsung smart bridges, you could probably realistically run League of Legends on it. But one last feature that we could take a look at is the fact that Dota 2 actually does support FSR. Now, realistically, FSR should not net us any gain here because it doesn't really matter what we do in terms of, you know, dropping the resolution at this point. We are CPU limited, so we should realistically not see any gains from using it. 
but obviously we should test it out to see if there are any. Now, Dota 2's implementation of FSR is actually a resolution slider, and you just have to enable FSR for it. You can just adjust the resolution just straight up, but it won't have any upscaling. This is with FSR, and it's set to 75%, and it actually did see an uplift in the 1% lows. The averages are pretty much at this point at 120, and the 1% lows are in the mid-70s. It was actually a pretty decent uplift. I was not expecting to see any major gains here just because of the CPU limitation, but there are some to be had here. And this does mean that if you have a system with a 120 hertz display, which there are actually systems shipping now with like the 5600U that have 120 hertz displays, so you could actually realistically do some high refresh rate gaming on a system with just integrated graphics. And I found that the FSR setting to 75% did not do anything to destroy the image. It looked perfectly fine to me. I really didn't find any issues with it now i did not use it with a monitor so i don't know if on a bigger like 24 inch display it would actually become more noticeable but at least on the display of the laptop itself it looked perfectly fine but anyways i hope you found this video useful if you did be sure to subscribe and i will see you in the next one